So hello and welcome to my next tutorial. This tutorial is about debugging. I'm using the PLE version and unfortunately there is no debugger function available. But on the other hand, for the basic debugging, thanks, no debugger is really needed. What I'm going to do is in this model at some point in time, I'm changing some values in this beautiful matrix here. This matrix is an array um, consisting of three rows and eight columns. And in the first row, the last entity is changed at some point in time. So what I'm going to do is I'm drag and dropping from the agent palette an event into my model. I call that event event MRP. No, not MRP. I'm sorry, debugging, of course. So we can enlarge that a little. And I call this event and time zero. And then I'm using the following code lines, which I'm going to show you now. So I'm using a for loop. I iterate from zero to eight because I'm interested in the eight columns of this matrix. And I'm focusing this one only on the first row. If you want to analyze all three rows, then you have to use a for loop over a for loop. And um the idea is that i'm using the println function you find it in system.out and dot print and l and then you can give as argument the cross requirements at the specific position and i'm using um, the zero to indicate that i'm interested in the first row and the i is my counter which i use in the for loop and this one iterates from zero um, to seven so that I get access on the console to all eight values of this row. What is happening now? If I start the debugger or the model with my debugging function, then we can see on the console immediately the outcome and we can see it here as well. So at time zero, um, the array is indeed zero at least for the first row. So if I'm going to change the occurrence time to one, then this event is executed at um, the first period. I run it again, and then we can immediately see the change that my last entity is a one. And that's exactly what I did in this model. The good news is we are not limited just to this matrix. We can also see more information about some blocks. So perhaps we're interested about the queue size of the first queue in the match block. So after we have done this iteration for this matrix, we can use the println for match. We go for dot q1 and the size. That should return in the end the queue size on the console. And let's see what's happening. We can see here a ninth entity, and this is now the queue size, which is at point one in time one. Thank you so much for listening to this short tutorial.